They had too much shit in the back, and they just started throwing. Hey, sunshine, put that shit inside of the box. What's going on, everybody? Jay Hayes here. So today I'm going to be doing a review on a device that I picked up for the purposes of the review. Oh my God, is this going to be fun. You know, listen, I understand that companies have to keep coming out with things over and over and over just to be relevant, just like I do reviews. Or just like anybody that makes products or anything in general, you want to continually make things. However, there comes a point where you have to kind of draw the line, and I think that's exactly what Geek Vape did. Uh, whether or not they knew that they draw the line is a totally different story. So Geek Vape has been making the Aegis series for a very long time. So what this does for me is bring up the ideology of the Dead Rabbit series. Yeah, the Dead Rabbit V2, the V1, the RTA, the RTA V2, the, the sub on tank, the single. There, there's just so many products that have used that same name. And Geek Vape has done the same thing. I don't, I, I, okay, I'm going to go on record here and saying that I don't think anything has surpassed how many products Geek Vape has made inside of their Aegis line. Like, they have a pod. They have uh, the, the Boost Jammy, the Max. The only thing that they haven't done is a dual 21700, and I get it. It works. It worked for the 26650 version. However, what has happened is a lot of the products that they've made after the 26650 version, with the exception of, I think, the dual battery, the one where a lot of people hated that review because, well, they bought it and they needed validation as to how great of a product it was. So now the device we're looking at today is a 21700 version of basically the 1800 or the 26650. And they made an adapter for the Aegis that made a 26650 be able to use a 21700. Now granted, it wasn't a perfect fit, right? Like it, so you have to realize that one is 26 millimeters in diameter, the battery versus one that's 21. And then it's five millimeters longer because a 26650 and an 18650 are both 65 millimeters in height versus a 21700 or a 2700 are 70 millimeters in height. But I don't know why they would do this. The only reason that I could come up with in my head is because there's a way to make more money off of it. To be honest with you, I don't even know if there's that many people that use these series because of what they're designed for. They may use it because they like the product or whatever. It's strong, it's gonna survive a fall. Most mods can survive a fall unless it's got like some type of glass or a resin, a resin would snap. And usually more often than not, all you could do, or all you really do is just crazy glue where it actually broke. And then when you put it all together, it doesn't look like it ever broke. So without further ado, let me bring this down, show everything inside of the box and use the sun bulb and tank and let you know my thoughts on it. Another Aegis product. Flip it. All right, so what you're looking at is the Aegis Max. That's the mod. And then the Zeus, which is the tank that is on the top. I don't think I went over this just because, well, they, again, another name that has been abused so much. They, it, it's like it's too difficult to make new names. And then on the bottom, we have the color configuration, 5 mils, sub ohm tank, 100 watts, and single 21700, that is impressive. The, but I do believe the 26650 also did 100 watts. Powered by ash chip and then mesh coil 0 0.2, 0 0.4 on a single 21700, man, that is going to tax the shit out of that battery. And then on the side of the box, on the back side of the box, go and give that a freeze frame for you. This is interesting. Because a coil tool, I don't know why you would need that if it's, in fact, a sub ohm tank. Battery door assist tool. So is the battery door going to be difficult? And then on the bottom, you have a scratch and sniff. This is going to smell and taste just like an iPhone battery case. So let's just open it up and see what's on the inside here. Sealed, still on the bottom on the inside. Very, very good thing. The mod, we'll go over that shortly. On the bottom of the box, you're going to get your sub ohm tank. Go ahead and take that out. And then there is a peripheral box on the inside, which feels very, very substantial. Get a 
user manual. And there you go, there's some more propaganda for the Geek Vapes. A warning card, and then a warranty jammy. And then on the inside of the box, holy cow, that is a lot of stuff. Oh my goodness, chimney cricket. You get a USB, which appears to be a micro USB. I guess they have them ported over to the USB-C like everybody else. I don't really see that as that big of a deal, but apparently a lot of people are super upset that things don't come with the USB-C. Silica gel packet, make sure you do not eat that if you want to survive. A spare coil, which appears to be proprietary. That is a Canthal Point 4 coil. Then you have a peripheral pouch, which has a bunch of extra O-rings and some type of wrench, which I'm assuming is the coil tool that they're talking about. A spare glass. And then this appears to be some type of adapter, maybe to use an 18650 versus 21700. And then, yes, in fact, that might be the coil tool itself. So I don't, I don't know why you would need that if you don't build coils, why? Okay, that's a little strange. So let's take a look at the sub ohm tank itself. We have a top airflow configuration, 810 drip tip on the top. It is gonna be black, so any type of ding, dent, burst, spur, or cowboy boot, I'm not gonna be able to see it. And then on the bottom of it, you're gonna have your serial number, GA226-2020-18. Is the, okay, sounds good, designed by Geek Vape. Very, very clean on the outside. There it is. And then to, then to fill it up, you know, you've seen this before, that usually when you take the top section off, the airflow is going to come with it. But you fill it up, and that is, in fact, not a turnable, threaded type of configuration. It's basically just a half turn, and then locks it in, and then to unlock it, do it again. Just make sure you don't grab your airflow ring when you pull it off. And then that's how you're going to fill it up. And then on the bottom, maybe that's what this is for? Yup. That's what that's for. I mean, that's cute. And you could always put that as a keychain. Or you could do what Aspire did, like with their Nephal. They just have prongs that you kind of just turn and then you pull them out. This, the requirement, well, it's not necessarily a requirement. But you could have this to pop them out. And then the coil that comes stock by default is probably going to be the 0.2. 70 to 80 watts. I'd prefer the 0.4 over the 0.2 just because while it doesn't seem that big of a difference and very arbitrary, this is going to require less power than what this is going to use. And then looking on the inside there, the inner diameter is different as this has less cotton than what this does. That kind of makes sense. And looking at the mesh configuration, one is gated, the other one is more like a, a fence or your typical style of mesh. So those notches right there is kind of the first time I've ever seen that in a sub ohm tank. So the coil really does go in one way. I like that. It is very, very thoughtful. I don't see a problem with being able to take that out after a while. Just make sure you don't grab this section because all it's going to do is pull out the positive and the negative. Put that back on. A problem with you have with a configuration like this, though, is, well, the biggest issue you're going to have is proprietary coils. And we know that proprietary coils at this point, they should have used, oh, you see what happened there with that O-ring? What they should have done was use the coils that they've used before. Okay, let's just fill that up and let that sit for about five minutes. I'm going to use that pineapple cream soda we always talk about. Ayo! Hopefully that's good. And I know what to compare this to because usually with UL and Aspire coils, that flavor, and even Freemax at this point, the flavor really does pop. And I'm very interested to see how good these coils are because when they did these Cerberus coils, they were actually pretty well done. And I use that tank religiously every day while I game. So it'd be nice. I just don't know what the hell the coil tool is for. I have no idea. So let's take a look at the mod. Now keep in mind that everything that you see on this screen is the exact same from this, from this, and not from this, but these are all indestructible style mods, so to speak. Aegis, Aegis, this is your mini, this is the single 18650. I'll put that aside for a second. I want to just show you a side-by-side -side comparison of the 18650 versus the 21700. Obviously, it is going to be a little bit taller. It is, in fact, a lot fatter, 
while it, it didn't really necessarily need to be. And then on the top section, you can see that you're going to be able to fit a bigger RDA on the 21 versus the 18650. To give you a real good size comparison, put a 28 millimeter, no problem whatsoever. 30 millimeter, 30 millimeter, you still have room. You could probably fit a 35 on there, but that is, in fact, the size of the 510 that it sits on. So 30 millimeter probably would be the maximum versus on the 18650. You definitely cannot use a 30 millimeter because what happens is on the edges, you do have a little bit of a residual overhang. Nothing too crazy to where you would feel it when you pick up the mod. Again, screens on both of these are exactly identical. So that fingerprint is probably for me. And then on the bottom, there you go. And then an 18650 would go in there like that. Easily done. 21700 battery orientation is listed down there. Positive on the top, just like that. Negative on the battery cap itself. All the battery caps are essentially the same thing. You just have this little thing that grabs up. Some people have complained about these breaking down and breaking off. I, I don't know. I've never really used the product that much to where I can say I've experienced. I have tried to break all of these. And I'm assuming it's just like everything else. It's very, very difficult to break. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Same exact screen. So basically all you're doing is just upgrading the battery. That is it. It is a literally the same exact thing as this. Now, and the price, oddly enough, this is old, is not too far off from what this is brand new. You know, it's like 50 bucks for this or $70 for the whole kit. So again, it's just really a personal preference as to how small do you want it to be versus how large do you want it to be? Because they even feel the same. Even Just look at it. It's a literally just an upgraded version of this. And this is one of the reasons why I don't really like doing reviews on things that make a miniaturized version, like the Blotto Mini. Well, you, you could use the argument and say, well, okay, one's got more flavor than the other versus one that is taller than the other. So you use that as a side-by-side -side comparison. But honestly, on, on things like this, there, there's not really much to discuss. It's just... Two different sizes of the same exact mod. So we'll put this tank on and then we'll bring it back on top. And you can see. God, that is ugly. And you can see that they include this lovely tank. But check this out. Why not include a 30 millimeter sub on tank? Do, do something a little bit different. This would belong on here, not on here. If you're going to make that big of a 510 connection, why not make something? And you could say, hey, we're going to use that same exact coil, just make it a little bit larger so it fits the mod. This is just like an afterthought. Like, hey, they're getting a starter kit, so let's just throw a sub on tank in. That's exactly what that is, because if it isn't, why is there not a beauty ring or something to remove that ugly gaudy of too large of a 510 with too small of a tank. It's like putting an 18 millimeter on something like this. It just doesn't make sense. Again, it seems meticulous, but I think it's something that needs to be pointed out considering they didn't change anything with this mod as far as the chip is concerned or the digitals inside or on the screen. All they did was just change how big of a battery they could put inside of the mod. That's it. Let's bring it back on top. All right, here we go. Back on the top with the 21700 and the Zeus X sub-ohm tank. And we're working with the 0.4 coil. That's a 35 watts. That is not enough. This has been sitting for about eight minutes, 62 watts on a stock coil. Here we go. That does not seem like enough airflow. Back that up all the way. I do like that the airflow ring locks all the way to the left and right. I will throw a whole lot more airflow. Let's bring up some more power. Let's do 83 watts. Getting the cream soda, getting a lot of vape. Getting a good amount of flavor, but not the most amazing flavor. I'm really going to chalk that up to Freemax and UL. Nailing that, and then a spire falling shortly after that. Okay, so before we talk about the mod, let's talk about these two fucking things, right? So why not just throw some shoes in the box? Just because, well, hey, we got some extra shoes laying around because the kid was in a sweatshop making them for Nike. So why not just throw them in? I know that's a different country, but it's not the point. Neither are these. So if they're labeling this as the coil tool, right, then what the fuck is this? This is something you would wrap a coil around right here, and then this looks like some type of weird wrench, like a, 
like a six millimeter you would use to take a fender off of a car. But it doesn't have a shape, it's just round. So in my mind, that's what you use to pop the coil out. So this would be the coil assist tool. What, what, and then what is the battery door assist tool? Is that that little thing that pops out? That's not a tool that's part of the button. Unless of course, your, or, or cap, I'm sorry. I know there's gonna be that guy. That's not a button, Jay. I know it's not a button. I just said it wrong. My bad. I'm sorry for being human. Maybe I should cut it out. Maybe I shouldn't. I'm going to leave it in to piss you the fuck off. Just like they're going to leave these two things that have nothing to do with anything. This serves no purpose for what they're selling. I'm telling you, they had too much shit in the back and they just started throwing. Hey, sunshine, put that shit inside of the box. We got way too many. We're going to pour it over to CBD soon. We don't need any of this shit. Just make it feel like people are getting things inside of their box that make them feel special. We're going to give them a rebuildable kit that serves no purpose for what they're buying. That's like buying a car and then they give you a moped rim. What the fuck am I going to do with that? What are you, you going to put it on a truck on the, on the back, like on a Jeep? What? I, I, I don't get this. I don't. I, it's a cool gesture. It just means absolutely nothing. This, on the other hand, is really nice because it does allow you to pop the coil out. And apparently, Bree was telling me that these actually came with some of the other Zeus tanks. Now, let's talk about the mod. Same shit again. They were going through the back, finding all these little uh, jigger jammies, and then they found these little wrenches and said, okay, we're going to put that in a box. Wait, there's a bunch of Geek Vape Aegis chips. Let's use those and make a 21700. Next, they're going to make a dual 21700 with the same fucking chip. You guys seriously need to sit down. You are becoming the next hell vape and heathen. Uh, I don't want to say conspiracy theory because that's a little bit far-fetched, but that's what you're becoming. Just, just stop. You don't need to keep making random shit. Oh my God, I love Geek Vape so much. I love it. I got to get the 21700. You know what? Fucking buy it. Go, go for it. I. What am I to compare right now? This versus what? The 18650? Okay, bigger battery. Meanwhile, the whole time, you could have bought their 26650, the original one, which I'm sure is pretty much on sale everywhere. I don't know if I've got some weird creases or if there's something on the screen. It's literally, the I, I can see the Geek Vape Mini. They got away with that one. I really did like that. Then they even did the dual 18650. I, not the color screen jammy. The one that kind of looked like a paranormal just rubberized. What am I going to say, man? I don't know what to say. There, is it terrible? Absolutely not. Is it big? Yup. Is it heavy? Yup. Is it rubbery? Mm-hmm. Can I drop this? Yup. Great. If I was to rate this device on a 0 to 10, I'm going to give it a 4. I don't think it's a piece of shit. I just don't know why they haven't upgraded anything. It's literally, guys, it's the same fucking chip. It looks like it came off of a Game Boy. It, it's it's black and white dot matrix shit, or black and gray, black and off white. It's just, it's not attractive. I, a four. That's the best I got. As far as a sub ohm tank is concerned, it looks like every other sub ohm tank. You want a good sub ohm tank, you buy... Seriously, I'm not I'm not even promoting the shit. I wish you all would send me a fucking check, but you buy you well nunchaku coils or that Freemax jammy while I tasted the same juice. I was like, God, dog, pineapple cream soda. This is just soda. That's all that, that that's what I get out of this. A four. It has absolutely zero redeeming qualities. They've made products that done that was <laughs> no idea what that was. They've made products that have done exactly what this does. Twenty one seven hundred. Is it worth that price upgrade? Nope. I do not believe so. Especially, well, I guess if you're running a hundred watts, but I would not be running a single battery anything at a hundred watts. Run a dual battery. Get something small. Wismac RX Gen three dual. You can't really find, but this is a great example. Like again. Wismec, where you at with that paycheck? Look at this and look at this. This is smaller, right? 
It's even smaller as far as depth is concerned. And the height. And mm, the weight is up there, but this is not bulletproof. Neither is this, but this is, I guess, semi-breakproof. I, I don't know. Just a four. And I've kept it real. Have you? Check these out. 